praise you Lift my hands and say I love you Everything to me, and I'll be exalt your holy name on high. I just want to praise you. Live Hi, I'm Pastor Dave. Welcome to Church Chateau. Today is Easter, the day we celebrate the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is risen. He is He's risen, risen indeed. indeed. Now, today we will be taking, partaking in communion at Church's Inn. So have your bread or crackers and your grape juice ready. And when the service is over, we will take communion as a church family. Now, if you'd like to contact us, you can reach us at Church Chateau on Facebook or Church Chateau, one word, at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. Now, on this date in history, in A.D. 1, Jesus Christ rose from the dead just as he said. In 1861, Fort Sumter was attacked in South Carolina to start the Civil War. In 1877, a catcher's mask was first used in a baseball game. And in 1934, the second highest wind speed was recorded on Mount Washington at 231 miles an hour. In 1938, the first U.S. law requiring medical tests for a marriage license was enacted. And in 1945, FDR, President Franklin D. Roosevelt, died in office. In 1954, Bill Haley and the Comets record the song Rock Around the Clock. And in 1988, Sonny Bono was elected mayor of Palm Springs, California. Now today, besides it being Easter, today is Drop Everything and Read Day. Walk on your wild side day. Grilled Cheese Sandwich Day, Only Child Day, and Licorice Day. But with today being what it is, I find it hard to believe that it's not National Chocolate Easter Egg Day. All right. A grandmother was so excited that her grandchildren came to visit her that she gave her church $10. She was so excited after they left, she gave her church $20. That takes us to our scripture reading for the day. It's out of Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 6. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. 
but they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. But it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what this day represents. We thank you for the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ so that we can have everlasting life. Lord, bless the service now. Bless this message. Bless all those who hear it. And Lord, may we all apply it to our lives and draw closer to you through it and fall more in love with you. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen.
street and you were stopped by a reporter and asked what important events have happened in your life, what would your answer be? Maybe you would answer, oh, when I got married, when I graduated from school, or when you had children. And what if that reporter followed up with another question by asking, what life-changing experiences have you had in your life? Maybe you'd say, oh, but I got a new job, or when I moved to a new city, or I had a health crisis. The answer to both these questions can be many. We all have had important events in our lives, along with life-changing circumstances. But what if a reporter was able to ask mankind, and not just mankind, but all of creation? They was able to ask them those two questions what would they answer? Well, there is really only one answer they could give for both questions, and that would be the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Last week's lesson was on the Passion Week. And if you remember, the word passion comes from the Latin root word, patior, which means to suffer, to suffer. Christ's week, this Passion Week, started off great with him riding into Jerusalem on that donkey and everybody celebrating. But after that, 
the wheels kind of came off. This week became a week of betrayal. Uh, crucified him. People deserted him. They lied about him. He was left alone to stand that trial. And then he died on the cross and he shed the blood for the remission of sins. That whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Now how can this one event in history, a man dying on a cross, become so important? How can this tragedy become the life-changing experience in mankind and all of creation? For the answer is open your Bibles to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16. If you have your Bibles, open up to Gospel of Mark, chapter 16. And we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 8. Now, when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Solomon, bought spices that they might come and anoint him. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they said among themselves, Who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him, as he said to you. So they went out quickly and fled from the tomb, for they trembled and were amazed. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Verse 6 of this Gospel of Mark says, He is risen. And then if you go to the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 28, in verse 6 again it says, He is risen. And then if you go to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, you guessed it, verse 6 again says, He has risen. And then in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 9, it says, For as yet they did not know the scripture, that he, speaking of Jesus, might must rise again from the dead. All four Gospels tell us the answer to our two questions. The answer is that Christ rose from the dead. But what about other places in the Bible? Well, in Acts chapter 3, verse 15, you killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. Acts chapter 4, verse 33, with great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 through 8, the Apostle Paul writes, For what I received, I pass on to you as of first importance. First importance. That the Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, according to the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the Twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me. Then in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, we read, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, you might be watching or listening to this message and be thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah that's just a Bible story. Yeah, yeah Jesus, nah, nah, he didn't really rise from the dead. It's just a fable. It's just something that's been made up over time. Well, let me give you a quick answer to that before we move on with our lesson. Peter was crucified upside down some 33 years after Christ's death and resurrection. 
Peter's brother Andrew, it is believed, was crucified. The Apostle Paul was beheaded. James Alphaeus, Alphaeus was stoned to death, as was Stephen. This is just to name a few. They all died because they preached Jesus Christ dying and rising from the dead. So why would these men and many others die a martyr's death for a lie? If it was all a lie, why would they die a martyr's death? The only answer is because it was not a lie, but true. It was the truth. And if you want more information on this, I recommend reading Josh McDowell's book, Evidence That Demands a Verdict, or Lee Strobel's book, The Case for Christ. Now, both these books came about because both of these men were atheists or agnostics. They did not believe. And they set out to try to disprove the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Their efforts, though, their findings brought them to faith in Christ. The Bible tells us that if you seek him, he will reveal himself to you. You will find him. Both these men studied all the evidence, and they weighed it out. And the only thing they could come to, the only conclusion was that Christ did live, that he was crucified, that he did die, and that he did, in fact, rise from the dead. The books are Josh McDowell, Evidence That Demands a Verdict, or Lee Strobel, The Case for Christ. Back to our lesson. How can this one event in history, a man dying on a cross, become so important? How can this tragedy become the life-changing experience for us, mankind, and all of creation? The answer to these questions is the resurrection. Many times when speaking and sharing about Christ, we stop at the cross. We stop at the cross. But the cross is just the first part, not the start and finish. The second part is the resurrection. And because of the resurrection, the story of Christ does not end, but lives. The cross is important because of the sacrifice Christ made for us, shedding his blood. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He shed his blood for us, for the remission of sins, that whoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If we stop our story at the cross, then we miss the everlasting life. All we have is a man who died a horrible death. When sin entered the world in the Garden of Eden through Adam and Eve, the Bible tells us that death entered in, physical death and spiritual death. And for us to be reconciled back to God and be forgiven, God requires a blood sacrifice. The ultimate final sacrifice was completed by Christ on the cross. But death still had to be taken care of. It had to be conquered. And Christ did that on the third day, just like he said he would. In Romans chapter 5, verses 12 through 21, the Bible tells us that death came into the world through Adam, but life came through Jesus Christ. Death came into this world through Adam, but life came through Jesus Christ. Because of sin, we have death. Christ, by taking away sin, by his death, had to prove he conquered sin and death by rising from the dead. Let me repeat that, please. Because of sin, we have death. Christ, by taking away sin by his death, had to prove he conquered sin and death by rising from the dead. All other religious figures, all other gurus in the world, and there are many, they all have died. Sure, they have lived a life of humility, a life of personal sacrifice, and have said many positive things, and they had and have many followers. But the thing is, is all these gurus, all these false idols, all these people that people have looked up to and given some sort of godlike status to, 
they have all died. Not one of them has ever come back from the dead. And not only are they dead, but they were sinners in need of a Savior. Jesus tells us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by him. And only he can say that because he is he lived a perfect, sinless life. He is God in the flesh who has come down from heaven. He shed his blood on the cross, died, and rose again. He died and rose again. Now, in the Gospels, in the resurrection stories in Mark, the angels tell the women, go and tell the disciples and Peter. In the Gospel of John, Mary Magdalene sees and talks with Jesus outside the tomb. And Jesus says to her, Mary. He calls her by name. While putting together this year's Easter message, these two parts of the resurrection story really jumped out at me. It ministered to me. The angel specifically named Peter. And Jesus himself calls Mary by name name. This important event, this life-changing experience in history, let me re-clarify re re that. This most important event, this most life-changing experience in the history of the world happened for us. And not only for us as a whole, but for us personally and for all of creation. We are called by name. We are called by name. God knows us personally. He created us. He writes the story of our life in his book. And he made a way for us to be saved, to be reconciled back to him. That we can have a relationship with him, to be forgiven of our sins, and have everlasting life because death was conquered. He is risen. Angels ask the women at the tomb, Why are you seeking the living among the dead? Why are you seeking the living among the dead? What are we seeking after? What are we seeking after? Let's go to Romans chapter 10 real quick. Look at verses 8 through 11. It says, what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. There's only one way. Before he went to the cross, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he prayed. And it was so heavy on him. He started sweating blood. And he prayed, Father, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. If there's any other way. There was no other way. And Jesus fulfilled what he came to do. Many people say, hey, there's many paths to heaven. Well, for that, I have to say you're right. There are many paths to heaven. But many of those paths, all those paths except for one, leads to heaven to face judgment. And then to hear the words from Jesus Christ tell you, I never knew you. Depart from me. There's only one way. 
If there were many ways, Christ would not have had to suffer all those things and died on the cross and rise from the dead. Sin entered into the world. And because of that, it caused separation between man and God. And it had to be reconciled. Man made the mistake, but God gave the antidote. He said it's Jesus Christ. You have to put your faith and belief on him. You have to accept that work that he did for you personally on the cross. And confess with your mouth that he is Lord and that he rose from the dead and you will be saved. It's nothing that we can do. The work was done. The work was done over 2,000 years ago on this weekend that we look at as Easter. We all fall short. We all fall short of the glory of God, and we need a Savior. And the Savior came, and his name is Jesus Christ. He conquered death, and he died to cover our sins. He took our place. And with that, we're going to have communion now as a church family. So if you have your elements ready, uh, Eric, come on up. We're going to uh, partake in communion together. Good morning, Chateau Church. We will be celebrating the Lord's Supper together. The Passover feast was instituted by God as a memorial of redemption from captivity in Egypt in the Old Testament. The Lord's Supper is a memorial of redemption from sin and death through the death and resurrection of our Lord. So may we drink, eat this bread and drink from this wine as a symbolism of being nourished of food and drink in God's grace upon our lives. In scripture it says, Paul said, for I received from the Lord that which was I also deliver to you that he, the Lord, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread and which, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's do this together. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's take this church together. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let's look to his return. Let's pray, church. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can celebrate the Lord's Supper even in this pandemic, this virus all over the world. Lord, that will not stop your gospel. It will not stop from the church celebrating and rejoicing and participating in the Lord's Supper. We know that we are saved by grace through faith. And Lord, we can celebrate and receive these elements and be nourished and grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May we rejoice, Lord, in this time. May we be a people that love God. In Jesus' glorious name, amen. The Resurrection Song, Alive, Alive. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. Sing, sing hallelujah, the Lord is risen. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, the Lord is risen. My Jesus is alive, 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 alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. Sing, 
sing hallelujah, the Lord is risen, my Jesus is alive, alive forevermore, sing hallelujah, the Lord is risen, my Jesus is alive, sing, sing hallelujah, the Lord is risen, my Jesus is alive. Alive forevermore, sing hallelujah, the Lord is risen, my Jesus is alive, my Jesus is alive, my Jesus is alive. Hi, I just want to thank you all for watching. I hope you have a blessed Easter. And remember, He is alive. God bless and have a great week in the Lord.